Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and welcome to another edition of You Don't Need a Dependency. And today we're going to be talking about Clamp, what Clamp is, and why you don't need a dependency. But before we do that, today's episode of You Don't Need a Dependency is sponsored by FileStack. FileStack at filestack.com is a simple and powerful file uploader API to transform, upload, and deliver any file into your application. Whether you want to upload, transform, or deliver, like I just mentioned, this gives you the option to do so with ease with a Node.js API, a Ruby API, PHP, or Python, as well as great documentation and SDKs for both, 100 times more reliable mobile uploads, and instantly available file links, the file stack uploader can increase your upload speeds by a factor of 3.6 and provides your users access to a variety of file sources, including Instagram, Dropbox, Google Drive, local device files, real-time audio, video, and photos. File stack intelligent ingestion guarantees upload success 99.99% of the time. That's a whole lot of time. That's just about all of the time here. And this alleviates user frustration with failed uploads, trying to convert or send themselves files from another location. Honestly, dealing with files is one of those things that developers can spend so much time on. And FileStack makes it easy with image transformation and conversion of file types. FileStack CDN also allows you to deliver files to any type of device, desktop or mobile, without worrying about the constraints such as file size or file quality. And like I mentioned before, integration is a breeze with all of their SDKs and APIs. So head on over to filestack.com and give FileStack a try for free. If you're dealing with files and you want to go ahead and try something that's trusted by SendGrid, SlideShare, Teachable, and Airtable, you're going to want to check out FileStack. Thanks so much for FileStack for sponsoring. All right, let's get into today's episode of You Don't Need a dependency. Now, this is something that I found to be a bit shocking. Uh, Clamp is a JavaScript module. This is kind of what I do in this series is we, we take a look at things that people are downloading and installing their projects and talk about why you don't need a dependency for this. Now, there you'll see if we look, there's string clamp, clamp tailwind. Okay, some of these things are not necessarily related, but clamp as a function right here, you can see that this is at version 1.01. .01. Okay, I, why? It has 378,000 weekly downloads. And although it was last published eight years ago, you can tell that it has had a lot of weekly downloads for a very long time. In fact, the, the total downloads for this thing have got to be massive. So, clamp. Do you need a clamp? Why would you ever need a clamp? What is the purpose of clamp and why don't you need a dependency? Well, one, just looking at this module, it's minuscule, but also there's much, there's better ways to do this. So what is clamp? Well, clamp is when you want to have a value stuck between two other values. So, so when you have a clamp, you have your value and then the min and the max, right? And the value, if it is between A and B will return the value. So if your minimum is 10 and your maximum is 100, you pass in 50, it's going to spit out 50. But if you pass in zero, it's going to return your minimum, which is 10. Or if it's above the maximum, it will return the maximum. Basically, what this is doing is clamping off your value in between the top and bottom of the boundaries. And clamp is extremely useful. We use this all the time. In fact, we use this in our animations to do all sorts of stuff. I love clamp. Lo <laughs> That's like, I love lamp. I didn't even realize it, but I, I love clamp. I do. And so are you think, all right, well, let me just install clamp and use clamp. No. Okay. Let's talk about clamp. So here's some JavaScript and maybe even bump this up a little bit. This is JS bin. And I'm just going to type out some JavaScript here to talk about how you can write your own clamp. Okay. Cause you can write your own clamp once and never have to deal with a dependency for it. So we're going to have a function and this function is named function clamp. Okay, now clamp will just like the other one will have our number, it will have a minimum and it will have a maximum. Okay, so the upper boundary, the lower boundary and the number we're passing into clamp. So we would like to return something here, right? 
Well, we're going to return a couple of things. And, and one of the thing, reasons why I said that this could be done really easily is that JavaScript includes some math functions. And we're going to pass in a math.min and a math.max. So if we take a look at math.min, a static function returns the lowest value of the numbers passed in or not a number if the parameter isn't a number and cannot be converted into one. So with math.min, if you pass in two values, see, they keep showing three values, but if you pass in two values, a two and a three, it's going to output the two, or in this case, three values, it's going to output the one. So it, if what we say in math.max is the exact same with just max. So if what we say is we want to math.max and we want to return either the number or the minimum number. So we're going to get the maximum value. If, if we pass in here a five and our minimum value is 10, it's going to say that 10 is greater than five. So therefore we will return 10. Okay. And likewise, we're just going to wrap the math dot max inside of a math dot min. Okay. And this math dot min is going to do the exact opposite where we're saying, all right, if the number is lower than the minimum, then return the minimum, and then we'll return the number here. And then we're going to take that number and say, all right, is that number above the maximum? And if it's above the maximum, then return the one that's lower, right? Does that make sense? We're going to either return the one that's lower here or the one that's higher. So first we're checking to make sure it's within the lower bounds by using math.max. Then we're checking to make sure it's in the higher bounds with math.min. And if your value, let's say, is, let's say, 50, and we want this to be between 0 and 100, we'll say, all right, between 0 and 100, is 0 more than 50? No. So it will return number, which is 50. And then we'll have 50 in place of here. And then it'll say, is 50 lower than the maximum? Yes, it is. So this will return 50. Okay. So if we want to illustrate this, we can run this with a console.log. You could do tests or whatever, but console log is fine for this. And we could say clamp. And again, let's do that exact example where we're saying 50, 0, 100. This should return 50. Um, run with JS. Or how do I get my console? Every we... Run, 50. Okay. And likewise, let's add a few more examples here. So let's say we're going to say negative 50 between 0 and 100. And then we'll say 50 between 75 and 100. And then we'll say 50 between 0 and 25. This, if this function worked, this should output 50. This should output what? 0. This should output Seventy-five, and this should output twenty-five. Okay, let's go ahead and click Run here, and you can see we get fifty, zero, seventy-five, twenty-five. Perfect. Clamp. And if you want to write clamp in a more simple way than this function, guess what? We can do it in a whole other way with arrow functions and implicit returns. We can say const clamp is equal to an arrow where you have num, min, max, and this will return math.min surrounded by math.max. And then we have the number min, comma, max. There. If you wanted to have a little bit more streamlined one liner, oh, it apparently doesn't like ES6 in this, but. Let's see if it runs anyways. It does. Who cares? Okay, so check it out. This is, you don't need a dependency for Clamp. 400,000 weekly downloads for this, for that? You got to be kidding me. Uh, you can do this yourself. You don't need a, a library to do this. You don't need to open yourself up for that kind of thing. But most importantly, you got to know that this is some simple math that JavaScript can do rather easily. And if you have math.min, math.max, there's nothing to stop you from building a little function like this. Now, there is something that I do want to talk about really quickly, which is slightly related. I often am using clamp and interpolate kind of in the same realm. 
and for interpolation is a little bit more tricky. And so if you are looking for an interpolation library that is high quality, high performance, the D3 has broken out their own interpolation functions into D3 interpolate. So if you're looking to interpolate things, check out D3 interpolate. You can read in here a little bit more about what interpolation is and how it differs from clamp because I, I, it's out of the scope of this video. But if you want to interpolate even between colors or dates or times, those types of things, you can do all that with this library. And that is the type of thing you do want to use a library for because I don't want to interpolate between colors. That sounds like a nightmare to me. So if you want to interpolate, D3 interpolate is where it's at. If you want to clamp, this is where it's at. It's a code so small you could fit it in the old version of Twitter's tweets, okay? So thank you so much for watching and thank you to Filestack for sponsoring this video.